Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I'm so glad that you're here. Today, we are going to talk about wholesale. We're going to talk about what you can do and how much affordable wholesale really is and talk about the myths and money mindset stuff that really holds us back from everything else. But first, I have a couple of things I want to share with you. First of all, we want you to... In to join our Facebook group. So we have a Facebook group. It is sellers just like you, just like me, who are just trying to get by on Amazon and learn all the things. It is a um, code word only because we don't want any spammers coming in and just joining every single group. We keep it small and we it require a code word so that you know that you've been to the, the website or you've enjoyed some content and you know that this is the place for you. So your code word to join the Facebook group, mommyincome.com slash join code word is 300 or less. That's the number 300. Type it out if you want. Hashtag 300 or less because we are going to go through how to start wholesale for $300 or less. Yes, it's affordable. Yes, it's possible. And I want you guys to know that. So that's coming up in a second. Also, I want to tell you about a special event that we're having. In next week, we are going to be doing Student Appreciation Week. I love all of you, and I appreciate each and every one of you listening, watching, tagging, commenting, all the things. So we are having a Student Appreciation Week next week, and I want you to make sure you're subscribed to all the social media channels so that you hear about the announcements. We're doing some giveaways, some contests, and a special event on June the 11th to... Um, commemorate the week that it, we're going to do an ask me anything um, type of webinar. So if you have anything, questions you want to ask about Amazon, about bundling, about wholesale, how to get started, all these different things. If you have a burning question about Amazon, selling on Amazon, anything, um, it's an ask me anything hour where you can come. There's also going to be some prizes and some giveaways for um, different things we're doing that event. So you want to make sure that you go to mommyincome.com slash ask me anything and register for the that event. It's a free event. Anyone can come. If you've got somebody you know that wants to um, learn a little bit more about Amazon or has some questions and they just re really need this burning question answered, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure all those questions are answered within that time period. So make sure you come mommyincome.com slash ask me anything. So now we're going to talk about wholesale. And the number one thing that I hear from everyone all the time is I can't afford it. it says everyone thinks they can't afford wholesale. Everyone has these ideas that like, oh my gosh, it's going to be so expensive. I'm too small. I don't have a brick and mortar store. They're not going to sell to me all these crazy things. And we are going to talk about how you today can start wholesale for $300 or less. But it all goes back to some of the stuff that's in your mind. Why do you think that you can't afford wholesale to begin with? It is the I can't afford it, right? I absolutely hate these words. I hate that. Um, and growing up as a kid, I remember a specific, specific thing um, in my childhood that really just marked this whole I can't afford it thing. I grew up in a single parent family and my dad took me to the grocery store and we were, we had to go to the grocery store. And so I'm just going along with him. And I found the cereal that I really, really wanted. It was a cereal. I saw it on TV. It had this like sticker book activity kit that was inside of it. And I really, really wanted the kit more than the cereal itself. I kind of wanted both. And I picked this year. I'm like, can we please, please get this now? Mind you, I wasn't a little bratty kid expecting my dad to buy me everything I wanted. It was just this one thing that I was asking for. And he basically said, oh no, we can't have that, that we can't afford that kind. We have to get, you know, a different kind. And he could have said it's not healthy. He could have said all kinds of things, but it was all about that money. It was about, we can't afford that. And I literally put my hands on my hips and I was like, when I grow up, I'm going to afford any cereal I want. <laughs> and you can read more about this whole story. There's a whole story in my book, Dream Big, Step Small. You can get it on Amazon, Audible, wherever. Um, but that was really something that marked my life and gave me kind of a money star, if you will, about not being able to afford things that like certain things cost a certain amount of money. And of course I was eight years old. I had no idea how to earn money, how to keep it, how to spend it, any of that. I just knew that I can't afford it limited my choice. And so I'm not a kid anymore. And I get, I get how money works now, but we all have a budget in life and in business, but we all also have 
limiting beliefs that surround money. We have limiting beliefs surrounding business. We have limiting beliefs surrounding ourselves all the time. And so if you don't think you have limiting beliefs or you don't know what they are, I'm going to go through some phrases and I want you to see if you've ever said this, have your parents ever said this? Do you say this now? Do you believe any of these in your heart and soul? Now, this is not right, wrong, good, bad, or anything. It's just gathering these thoughts that limit us to what we can accomplish, what we can achieve, and what we can do with money. So have you ever said, we can't afford it, I can't afford it, or I'm broke. Debt is a part of life. I'm always going to have debt. Money doesn't grow on trees. Less is more. Wealthy people are greedy. More money, more problems. I can't save money. Anybody said that? I just can't save money. I just spend it like it's water. How about money is the root of all evil? Money can't buy happiness. We're not made of money. Don't waste your money. Be happy with the money you've got. The truth is we've all said one or multiple of these and we still have these beliefs stuck up in our heads. And this affects how we spend money, how we invest, how we make decisions. This literally affects how we deal in business. So that's why this is so relevant right now to talk about because this affects how we make decisions in our business. Specifically in this episode, talking about wholesale. If you really feel like you can't afford it, that's a stumbling block before you even get started. You've just decided, oh, I can't afford wholesale. It's just too much for me. It's going to be too much, or there's too much work involved, or there's too much of this. You are setting yourself up and sabotaging your own success because you're believing something that you don't have the facts about just yet. So we're going we're gonna to go there in a minute. But if you've ever had any of these limiting money beliefs, I mean, I can't save money. Like my husband still says this to this day and partially it, it is true, um, but it's also a choice. It's one of those things where I can't save money. Every time he's got some, he's like, oh my gosh, I want to spend all this. We all have these issues, right? Or the debt thing. Like, you know, some people are super anti-debt and some people just actually believe that debt is just a part of life and everyone has it and everyone's going to have it and there's no other way. But we want to talk about these limiting beliefs because the truth is, you don't have to believe any of these things anymore. You don't have to that. You can unsubscribe to any of these thoughts anytime you want. You can just decide that I don't have to believe that anymore. And we have to go through all this. Again, you want to get Dream Big, Step Small. It's my book. And you want to make sure that you get the full scope of this because I don't have time now to unpack everything that's in the book and in the chapter about money mindset where we go through all of these different things of how um, this money mindset is limiting you. But the truth is, in a nutshell, in the um, Cliff Notes versions here is that you can unsubscribe to these thoughts anytime you want to. You have the steering wheel, you drive your car and it will drive where you steer it. So if you steer it in the negative, I can't afford it. I'm always going to be broke. I'm never going to have what I want over here. That's where your car is going to drive. So if you want to drive your car in a different direction, you simply turn the wheel. You are in control of what you have. And if you're not, then that's a way that you can fix it. You're in control of your thoughts. And if you've got these default thoughts, hello, me, I do. I've had to work hard to fight against this stuff. Um, you can change the way that you think and move and breathe about money, which will also help you control and make better decisions in your business when it comes to spending such money. Uh, that's one of the key things that I had to learn that was literally that aha revelation moment um, was that money isn't good or bad. It's just a tool. So growing up, I kept thinking that like money, like too much money was bad. Again, I talk about that in the book and I tell a whole story about the, where that kind of mindset comes from. And our parents, grandparents, people around us mean no harm. I think they're just passing on what they consider generational wisdom or something that they've learned. But as a grown up, we get to decide what we believe and what we don't believe and what we subscribe to and what we decide is no longer serving us. You don't have to continually think about these money things um, the way that you used to. And so money isn't good or bad. It's just a tool. It's just a resource. It's some the resource. It's something to use to build and fix and improve things. And my, one of my favorite analogies of this is like using a tool, right? My husband and my dad were always like woodworkers. They fix things, they build things, they have tools. There's tools all over the place. Hello, anybody else's husband like leave tools everywhere? Like, I don't know, I just feel like there's, there's no tool. We have a tool bench and a tool box and a tool bucket and a tool belt. And yet 
there's tools in my kitchen. I don't know how this happens, but ah, oh, well, such is life. The thing is, is that you use tools to do something with. That the tool itself is not right or wrong. The tool just does what you command it to do. Same thing with money. If you have a hammer, you hit a nail, you hit something, you remove a nail, whatever it is, you use the tool to do something. So you need to use your money to build things, to fix things, to improve things. It's just like a tool. It's not good or bad. It's just a resource. And these types of limiting beliefs that we have about money really sabotage our success. They're subtle yet powerful and we have to control them in order to make room for new thoughts about money. And so when you're, when you're thinking about all these things and you're thinking, oh, I can't afford this or I'm broke or I'm always going to be like this or I'm not succeeding and it's never going to work out, again, you're steering the car in that direction. So let's change our mindset about money, first of all, about what we can and can't afford. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. But first, the, the first thing you have to do is flip the script. This is one of my favorite things that I have learned how to do and I'm still practicing. I'm right there with you. I have not conquered all of these things. I'm just practicing the same thing is that I'm flipping the script. I'm giving myself permission and I'm giving you permission right now to flip the script for yourself. You no longer have to have those same money mindset ideals that you grew up with or that someone somehow inputted into your life and that you've decided that that no longer serves you. You're a grown up now. <laughs> Some of us are anyway, sometimes. Uh, you don't have to believe these things anymore and you can change your mindset a little bit at a time. You can swap these negative beliefs right now for something new, for a different type of script. Now, in my book, I talk a lot about this. There's a whole bunch of different scripts where you can flip one to the other and it gives you suggestions on how to flip those. But here's just a couple of them. Um, and yeah, dream big, step small, get it on Amazon or go to mommyincome.com slash book and you can get the book there. Wait, you guys are like, I thought we were talking about wholesale here. What is your problem? We are, and we're going to get to that. And I promise, but I really want these things to sink in and settle in. If you get nothing else from this episode, well, you'll get something fun and free at the end. But if you get nothing else, just Think about that for a second. Is that just because you were raised a certain way or someone or something or somehow inputted thoughts into your belief system, you have the power and the control to change that anytime you want. If you don't like saying, I can't afford it, if you don't like affording things, if you don't, you don't like being broke, you have the power to do something different. Even small steps make a big difference. So we're talking about all this, but this is all part of how we make decisions. And honestly, your mindset about money could be the very thing that's holding you back from investing in yourself and investing more in, a bit in your business. So flipping the script is simply telling yourself a different story. Instead of saying, I'm broke, you can say something like, I work hard and I am capable of improving my income and my circumstances. That's just the difference of I'm broke. Oh, I'm broke all the time. I don't have any money. There's more months than money. Y'all, I've been there way too long and made too many times. I get it. I used to say I'm broke all the time. And now, not I, I don't say that anymore, even if it is true. I was like, oh my gosh, we're broke. I look at that and say, I am a hard worker and I am capable of improving my circumstances. I actually correct myself because I still, I still correct my husband too. He's learning. Um, but he says, oh, we can't afford that. He says that all the time. And I say, no, we're not saying we can't afford that. We're saying this instead. It's not a priority for us right now. Or let's make a plan to save for that. Because there are truly things right now that we want that we, quote unquote, can't afford or don't have the resources to invest. So that's another way you can say that. I don't have the resources to invest in that right now. That's perfectly okay. But if it's something you really want, say, I'm going to make a plan to save for that. Pennies make dollars. Pennies make dollars. I saved and saved and saved pennies and nickels and dollars to be able to go on one of our first vacations that my husband and I went on. It wasn't hard, but it took like eight or nine months to save up enough money to go on this little mini four-day weekend. But pennies make dollars. It's possible if you really want it. So 
how you think about money is the key to having more or less of it. And that doesn't mean like if I sit here and fantasize about money that all of a sudden it's going to just rain down on my head. But how you think about the abundance or scarcity of money is also how you make better decisions. Have you ever heard someone say or ask you this question? I find this question absolutely phenomenally in depth. I just really think about it and I think it's so profound to really think about this, this question. So the question is, what would you do with your time and your energy if you never had to earn money again? So some people are like, oh, if you win the lottery, $10 million, or someone else is providing for all of your needs and you know, you don't have to worry about that, or you've earned enough money in your lifetime to where you just don't ever have to work or earn again. What would you really put your time and energy into? Because that's the answer that you want to use to say, is this what I'm doing? Of course, reality is most of us have to still do that. But sitting there and thinking about that, that is something that you want to start changing your mindset about and thinking about what would I do with my time and energy if I didn't have to earn money? Well, you'd be off of this podcast and probably in, on some beach or climbing some mountain somewhere and not listening to that. But as we're running our business, we have to, to think about how we're investing in it and what is the reason why we're investing in it. The key to how you think about these things will help you in the long run. I got to throw myself under the bus here and tell you that early on in my business, I was really afraid to invest in teaching or coaching or anything like that because honestly, I couldn't afford it. I didn't have the resources to up my game. And then I heard someone say that you can't afford not to. And that kind of changed my mindset and thought, I can't learn anything new if I don't invest. And there was this book I wanted when I wanted to do eBay and I wanted, I was doing eBay and I wanted to do better at it. And at, at the time there was no online webinars or podcasts. There was just books and some other training things you could read through and, you know, actual courses that you signed up for and showed up in person. Can you imagine? <laughs> So this book I really wanted, and I knew I wanted to invest in my education, but I just didn't have the resources. And so I chose to continually sell on eBay, sell a couple of things. I needed to sell five things, I think, that were worth about $10 to get this $50 book. I know $50 doesn't seem like a lot of money, but to a one income family with a couple of kids and hardly, you know, more months than money, um, $50 is a big deal. It was the difference between having gas in the car and not. And so um, I had to earn that money. And I think I treasured the investment more because I knew it was something that would help me grow. Investing in your business and thinking about yourself and what you can, can and can't afford um, is all in your mind. And you have to decide first what you want most, and then you have to make a plan to get there. That starts in your mind. It doesn't start with a to-do list. It doesn't start with going into your financial books and looking at all the numbers. It, decide, it, it starts with a decision to go after what you really want and deciding that you can afford it eventually, that you can have what you will work for. So let's get to the wholesale side of things because I know that's why you wanted to hear this episode and all this money mindset, blah, blah, blah. Just consider it. Consider what you would do with your time and money and energy if it was so abundant that you didn't have to worry about it anymore. What kind of decisions would you make in your business if you had 10 times more resources that you have now? How about double the resources? What would you do differently? What is the one thing that you want so bad to say, oh, if I could afford that right now, I would buy for my business or I would invest in, what is that thing? Think about what that is. And now let's get to wholesale and talk about that. Most people think wholesale, that are new to wholesale, think it's extremely overwhelming to come into it. They have limited beliefs like I can't afford it or no one will sell to me or there's no profit in, in wholesale on Amazon. And all of these things are limiting beliefs. We believe something that we've heard or we, we piece together our experience with someone else's experience and somebody's comment on Facebook and, okay, you looked up one wholesaler and they said no to you. Oh, all is lost. Might as well go home and try something different because this isn't working out. Come on, people. We have to work harder than that. Like, don't give up on your first shot. So 
let's debunk some of these myths. Let's talk about flipping the script here for just a second in when it comes to wholesale, because we all have some limiting beliefs when it comes to wholesale. I can't afford it is the number one thing that people say. I get emails all the time like, oh, wholesale is kind of expensive. And what do I do about this? Let's just be real for a second. How much are you spending right now to buy product? Are you, if you're selling on Amazon, you're buying your product from somewhere. If it's not a wholesale source, is it retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, thrifting? Maybe you're into private label. Let's not even talk about how expensive private label can be because that's more of the truth than it is for wholesale. How much do you spend each week or month on your sourcing? If you spend more than $300, then you can afford wholesale. How much time? are you spending? Each week you go out sourcing. So if you're doing retail or online arbitrage or even some private label stuff, you're spending hours and hours pounding the pavement, getting up your stuff, putting it in the car, bringing it home, unloading it, packing all the things. Time is money, y'all. Time is money. That's just the truth. So let's do a little math problem here for just a second. Ooh, math. I love math. I love my numbers. I actually don't love math. I love finance and things like that and making all the things balance together and seeing how much I, I, people are earning and what product is earning what. So that's just my geek out for the minute, but time is money. So if you spend five hours making $500, say you're out, you know, maybe you're doing some retail arbitrage and you fill up your car and you're out for about five hours scanning stuff and driving here to there, total trip, driving there, back, getting all the stuff in and out, and that whole trip's going to make you $500. Then you make $100 an hour. Pretty good money, huh? I mean, that sounds great, right? I mean, who doesn't want to make 100 bucks an hour? Sounds amazing. What happens if you spend 15 minutes to make $500? That's actually $2,000 an hour. This is what wholesale can do for you. You spend the time up front doing the research one time. You reorder and you order and you reorder in 15 minutes or less. So how does $2,000 an hour sound? I mean, sounds pretty good to me. So yeah, I hear you saying, yeah, yeah, who makes $2,000 an hour? Well, doing the math. If you place an order that takes you 15 minutes and you buy a certain number of, of inventory with that money and that money eventually earns you $2,000, you made $2,000 for one-time effort. That is more a recurring long-term business goal that you want to have. Can you afford that? Is that something you want? If, if someone asked you how much money you make and you say $2,000 an hour, I think most people would either A, not believe you, or two, be like, what do you do for a living and let me sign up. Um, the reality here is that that is possible. You can place an order that makes you $2,000 in net profit in 15 minutes or less. The beginning, when you find the products, it takes a little bit longer, but overall, you do that one time and then repeat it. This is why your brick and mortar stores don't go to other brick and mortar stores to buy stuff. I mean, if we say that out loud, it kind of sounds ludicrous, right? Like, what if people at Walmart, not the people at Walmart website where people wear funny things and take pictures of people at Walmart, but what if Walmart executives were going over to JCPenney or Macy's or Target and shopping off of their shelves and then reselling it? I mean, it does kind of sound kind of wonky, doesn't it? I mean, these are legitimate businesses. Guess what? You are too. If you have your business license or if you have your LLC or even a sole proprietorship and you're set up as a legitimate business and have a sales tax ID or what's required in your state, you are a legitimate business and can buy wholesale, plain and simple. That is really the bottom line to it all. My first wholesale order was nearly six years ago and it was $250. That's it. I was spending triple that doing retail arbitrage. So this is something that is affordable. But what is really holding you back from starting is probably not what's affordable. It's probably the processes and what do I say and what do I do and I don't know what I'm doing and I'm scared and so I'm not going to do it. That's more of probably what's holding you back rather than I can't afford it or it's going to be too expensive. So let's just cut to the chase there. Are you just afraid because you don't know the process? Because that's the easy part. The easy part is the process. And you can learn that at, in our wholesale bundle system, how to contact wholesalers, where to find them. We'll talk about that in a minute. Where to find wholesalers, how to reach out to them, how to ask them for help, how to ask them for their catalogs. All of this stuff is just a process that you don't know. And you don't know what you don't know, and it's okay. 
but it's time to learn because you can't let that fear and that limiting belief set in your way of doing legitimate business with wholesale. It will change the way that you do business. It will save you so much time and energy in the long run. I'm all about the long game. This is not a get rich quick. This is building a business that is long-term sustainable and that will continually put money into your pocket and into your income. If that's what you want, you've got to do some work up front to get there. So what is the second thing? The second limiting belief we have is that they won't sell to Amazon sellers. They're not going to sell to me. Okay. 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 I hear this all the time and people continually say it. And yes, people get turned down. I get turned down. I've been saying, oh no, we don't have, we don't allow Amazon sellers. And then I give them my special pitch that I like to give people when they say no to me. And some of them say yes, and some of them still say no. And that's okay, because guess what? You know how many companies are out there that sell wholesale products? Millions, millions and millions and millions. There are plenty of wholesalers willing to work with Amazon sellers. They have low to zero minimums. There are these companies out there. Just to put your mind at ease, I put together a list of five of these vendors that I know of that will say yes to Amazon and have very low, less than $300 minimum orders. You can go to mommyincome.com slash vendors right now to get that list. And you can start buying from those companies and selling on Amazon today. If you're set up as a legitimate wholesale business, if you're not, then you need to go to um, a wholesale bundle system and get that because that will teach you how to set yourself up as a legitimate business so that you can buy wholesale. Mommyincome.com slash vendors, a list of five vendors you can contact. They'll sell to you as an Amazon seller. They'll sell to you for less than $300 as your opening order. And this is just something... That I'm trying to help you out with. Like, I know a lot of people come there like, oh, you have all these vendors, but like, I don't have any, I can't find anyone that'll say yes to me, all these different things. So here you go. You're welcome. Now you have a list of at least five. So now you have no more excuses. You don't have any more excuses. So I can't find people. They won't sell to me. I can't afford it. If you've got $300 and a legitimate business, you can get any of these, any, for anything from any of these vendors that you're going to get. So go get the list mommyincome.com slash vendors so that you can get that list. And the third thing is there's no profit in wholesale. Okay, Kristen, I went to your little vendor thing. I got all these stuff, but now I'm not finding any vendors. I'm not finding any money in any of these wholesale catalogs. So now what do I do? Now, this is the only what I consider limiting belief that is kind of true. Um, it's kind of true that there are, that as competition grows and as markets become more saturated, it's getting more challenging to sell single unit items on platforms like Amazon. Number one, they have a pretty hefty fee. Now, don't get me started on Amazon fees. I don't care about Amazon fees because I love the services they're providing for me as an online e-commerce retailer. They're providing traffic, they're providing customer service, they're providing packaging and shipping, all of the different things that they do to get that stuff to my customers, I would never be able to do at this scale by myself. So thank you, Amazon, for providing your, your platform so I could sell products and make money. Um, but there, as competition grows, there is um, you know limited number of pro profit you can make with the Amazon fees and everything else. So what is the solution? I bet you all know the answer already, but I'm gonna tell you anyway, the solution is to find smaller niches, things that aren't as saturated, like we're not going to the top 10 list and trying to sell all those things, get real, we're not gonna do it. There's, I don't need to, I don't even sell anything that's a brand name that any of y'all would ever hear of really. Like all the stuff I have doesn't have brand names, it just has, it's just a product people are looking for. But bundle, 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 that's why we bundle, because you can increase your profit margins, decrease your competition, and just flat out make more money when you bundle with wholesale. So these are just the things that you have to think about, thinking about your money mindset and how you're investing in your business. You simply cannot grow if you don't believe that you can, believe that you can't afford it, believe that you can move forward to grow your business and invest in yourself. It doesn't happen by accident. It doesn't happen overnight. And sometimes we just have to be disciplined enough to save for the things that we want to afford. It's not just gonna happen for you. Or if you don't wanna save and you just wanna earn more, then you just have it right now, you have the power to earn more. You have the power to learn how to do something new that's gonna bring you in more money. And I really do believe that if you're in the retail arbitrage 
um, or online arbitrage aspect of that, or even if you're making your own products or private labeling, that wholesale and bundle is the key, it bundling is the key to growing um, on multiple platforms, specifically on Amazon, and making a little bit more money. You're carving out your own little space in the marketplace, and you can just work smarter not harder when it comes to these things, bundling and wholesale. So get your vendor list, mommyincome.com slash vendors so that you can get that list and you can get started right now. Now you're no, no excuses. If you have $300 or less, sometimes it is less. Actually, one of the vendors on the list has zero minimum order. In other words, you can buy one of something and still get a wholesale price. And this is not a middleman. This is legitimate wholesalers that will sell you even one thing at a price. Of course, the more you buy, the more discount you're going to get. So mommyincome.com slash vendors, get that. And don't forget to register for the Ask Me Anything event on June the 11th at 8 p.m. mommyincome.com slash askmeanything. So now you've got a way to flip the script, change your money mindset ideas towards your business, start jumping into wholesale, get your vendor list, and I will see you back here same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.